Hey folks, as I'm writing this, I'm currently sitting in a hotel, away for a little jaunt with work, so with no graphics cards to benchmark, no games to test and no used parts to clean up, I started thinking about the state of the graphics cards market. 2017 it's been a funny old year for graphics cards, with the crypto mining boom cranking up the price of cards and shifting a lot of budget cards into higher price brackets. Knowing what to buy, it can be a little bit of a minefield. So for this video we're going to take a look at some cards that I personally think should have your attention if you're looking to build or upgrade at the end of 2017 and going into 2018. First up we've got the sub £50 or $50 category. Now this was a fun one to look into as the price range up to 50 bucks. It features a lot and I mean a lot of cards. Obviously at this range you're not going to be looking at any new cards but that doesn't mean you've got to buy some ancient old banger. Newer lower end cards are not going to fall into this price bracket yet. So cards like the RX 560 or GTX 1050 are not going to be available here. But looking back a few generations, and if you want all out performance, something like a 2GB HD 6970 is still going to offer decent bang for your buck, despite being almost 7 years old. At under £50 or dollars, it can still cut it with the right mix of settings, but be warned though, the HD 6970 in its reference blower cooler style is noisy and hot, so you're going to want to spend a little bit more time finding an AIB partner card if possible. Still for under 50 bucks, it allows you to get that big card look while still pushing out decent FPS at a low price. If your poison is something a bit more power efficient and quiet, then you should look to the green team in my opinion. While it might be a stretch to find a GTX 750 Ti for under 50 quid, you can happily find the 2GB version of the vanilla GTX 750 at around the $40 or pounds mark. I say the 2GB as you're going to want to go with the larger VRAM options. Now as I've shown in other videos you can get by with a 1GB 750, and indeed that card did surprise me in tests, but the 2GB version is going to offer you a much better experience in some of the more demanding titles by simply not having to swap things out from system memory to VRAM quite so often. Going with a Maxwell card over some of the equally as powerful older cards is also going to mean optimization is going to be on your side. Nvidia's current architecture, Pascal, is basically just a souped up Maxwell, so any new game optimizations carried out for the current gen cards will be able to be leveraged by this baby Maxwell card too. Jumping up a level and looking what you can get for under £100 or dollars is another segment in which there's quite a lot of options. Staying with the green team, if you can find a used GTX 1050 Ti, then snap it up. They occasionally do sell for around the ton mark, but you're going to require a little bit more patience to find them. The vanilla GTX 1050 is also a solid option if you want to buy something new. And if you want a car that's fairly easy to find under the three figures mark, then the Maxwell based GTX 960, preferably in its 4GB guise, is a good option. Although it should be noted here that it is actually slower than the 1050 Ti in most titles. Jumping back to Team Red, and we've still got a good few options, despite the continuing pest that is the cryptocurrency boom. A Radeon HD 7950 or 70 can sometimes still sneak under the £100 mark. Likewise, the rebrands, the 280X and the 280, can occasionally be found for around about £100 or dollars, and they both still work exceptionally well in newer titles. They do tend to get snapped up fairly quickly though, so it will be a case of a lot of auction hunting and late night bidding to snap one up in this price range. A much easier bet if you want to just avoid the hassle would be to look at the lower tier cards, something like at the HD 7870 or its rebrand the R9270. These cards can sell for anywhere between 50 and 90 pounds here in the UK, depending on, well, a variety of pretty much unexplainable reasons. I've seen a fully boxed 270X go for 60 pounds, and then an unboxed 7870 go for over 100. And even thinking back to my Tahiti based 7870XT, that was around 60 pounds, so bargains can still be had. The key is though that these mid-range HD 7000 series cards were very popular and there's plenty of them going about, so it really is a case of pick your poison, red or green, and get hunting. The mid-range, between 100 and 150 ish, is dominated by one card really, and that is the GTX 970. It still makes a fantastic use buy and is going to stomp over any new card at this price point, which are usually tarted up 1050 Ti's. It will come in much closer to £150 or dollars though, but make no mistakes, it's a powerful and efficient card and it's going to serve you perfectly if 1080p gaming with a lot of eye candy is your thing. 
Now between 150 and 200 is another funny area. The absence of AMD cards at their MSRP means the only real new option is a lower tiered GTX 1063GB, which is a good card, but it's not going to offer any more performance than the GTX 970 in the previous section. There are a few used RX 480s starting to creep into the sub £200 bracket, but be wary, the majority of these cards are going to have led a really hard life mining, and as much as it pains me, I mean the RX 480 is a really great card, I'd probably be looking to Nvidia. I'm trying to snag a GTX 980 which often come in at around £200 plus shipping on the used market. Now 200 to 300 it's the final bracket here and it holds a wide variety of cards. At the low end of the scale you're going to find a lot of GTX 980s and new you can get a GTX 1060 or an RX 580. And at the high end you're going to find cards like the R9 390X which is still very capable or maybe even an RX Fury which like the 390X is a good card, it's just not that competitive. The gem here, I think it has to go to the green team once again, in the UK at least. The GTX 980 Ti can be had slap bang in the middle of this price bracket with a few of the more desirable SKUs being closer to 300. And what do you get for that? Well, out of the box, the card is a screamer. Compare them favourably with the Maxwell Titan, and with a mild overclock, you're going to be mixing it up with the likes of the AMD RX Vega 56 and the GTX 1070, both cards which are going to cost you well over £100 more, even on the used market. For the price of £250 to £280 or dollars, there's very little that's actually going to compete with the 980 Ti, even as we head into 2018. So what do I take away from looking at this topic? Well, firstly, it's the AMD series that needs to sort out their supply of cards. They've got some great cards out there, but at this point in time it's hard to recommend any of the RX cards, other than perhaps maybe the Vega 56, due to the non-competitiveness of their retail pricing. The second thing is that whatever price bracket you're looking at, Nvidia's got a Maxwell based GPU for you. And that's a massive takeaway here. Maxwell was really a great architecture that continues to provide value and performance even as we go into 2018. And that gives us a little bit of hope too. In a few years, who knows, we might end up getting a tasty 1080 Ti for around about 250 quid. Anyway folks, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Normal upload schedules will be resuming soon, I promise. Please let me know which one of these cards you think just should not have been on this list or if there's any additions that you think I should have made, as this list is of course very subjective. As always though, take care and I'll see you all in the comment section down below and in the next video.